Alright guys, thanks for tuning in today to our Moment Generating Functions video part 2. Today we're going to be going over um, how to solve that last problem more efficiently. Quickly, we're also going to derive a Moment Generating Function for um, exponential distributions since that's the distribution in question for our last um, problem. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, we don't want a two minute video, so we're going to take things to the next level, so to speak, today and go ahead and actually derive um, that moment generating function that we need. So let's recall that we aren't explicitly told that, I don't believe, um, for that problem, that we're dealing with an exponential distribution, but any memorization of moment generating functions and their properties is going to quickly reveal that. So let's just look right now at how to derive the moment generating function for exponential random variables with parameter lambda. So recall that our PDF for an exponential distribution is the following. And we'll put this domain here. Um, because that does become important in deriving our moment generating function. So let's go ahead and find that and we'll recall the definition here too of moment generating functions if you guys have forgotten. I'm sure you haven't. This is how we go about finding moment generating functions. So all we have to do is integrate the following. and we never forget that dx. So, all we have to do is integrate that, which looks like a monster at this stage in the game, but isn't too bad. So, our next step is to take that lambda outside of our integration because it's not a um, variable in question, it's actually more of a parameter. So, we're not concerned with that. Um, we're going to get the following. And now we can get to our final step. So, don't forget we can combine these terms here to get this. And now all we have to do is integrate. This is our last step we can do um, as far as simplifying and making lives easy, our lives easier on ourselves. Um, so from here we're going to obtain our moment generating function lambda over lambda minus t. So um, we've got some time. Let's take a look at um, our different moments and how we can use them and see if something maybe sticks to the wall for that problem. Uh, let's find our first moment which is equal to our first expected value and recall that this is what we want. So let's find our first moment by taking our first derivative. Um, we're not going to go straight to plugging in zero if you guys want to practice. Um, derivating this once you can just follow along but what you should get is lambda over lambda minus t squared so if we plug 0 in for t here we're going to get lambda over lambda squared we are going to get 1 over lambda so now that we have this, we can figure out exactly how to solve that last problem that was so confounding for us and required so much effort and time that we we don't want to do it that way on the exam. We want to do it much faster than that. I'm going to keep this moment generating function up here for us so that we can refer back to it. So. This is our speed and efficiency way.
we'll just make a little notation there of what that is so we don't get confused. Now let's recall what the problem asks us. An actuary determines the claim size for a certain class of actions is a random variable x with moment generating function. It should also be noted that we could have found the variance and if we managed to do that, our variance would have been one. Well, we'll write it. We'll write it out. There's no point in making you guys memorize these type of things for a short and quick video. If we had dedicated our time in this video to finding variance, we would have gotten one over lambda squared. So I know at first this doesn't seem like we're doing anything significant or anything that's going to have any progress here, but we will. So we wanted to determine the standard deviation of the claim size for a situation that is modeled by this moment generating function. I think in this example it's a class of lawsuits or accidents or something to that effect. So, all we have to do is recall our moment generating function down here for the exponential distribution with our parameter lambda and our mean or expected value down here of this. So, all we have to do is a little bit of trick work and we can see how this quickly becomes this, essentially. So, let's take a look. And it's probably sloppy notation for me to do this, but for the sake of our notation so we don't have all kinds of um, nastiness in here. I'm going to simplify it a little bit for you guys, although it's just easy enough to see here that these are really the same things. So now we have something that looks a little more in tune with what we have. So this is the moment generating function for four independent um, identically distributed exponential distributions, or random variables, pardon me, um, their IID, basically. Um, that's a concept you'll come across in, most likely, mathematical statistics. So, since they're all identical and independent, and they all have the same distribution, consequently, if we were to take the moment generating function for one of these to be 1 over 1 minus 2500 t as our new moment generating function and ignored this quarter here then we would see that each of these is going to have a mean of 2500 so we'll say that the mean for these is 2500 and the variance is um, the variance is going to be 2500 squared so we are coming to this conclusion based upon this which tells us that this is the moment generating function that we're really looking at we're dealing with four independent identically distributed exponential random variables and because we know that the mean here our first moment essentially well that might not technically be the correct term but we know our mean is 2500 therefore lambda is 1 over 2500 we obtain these facts so all we have to do 
is recognized now that we have four of these um, four of these identically distributed distributions and we can very quickly find our standard deviation so let's do that right now so this is our these are our basic facts here and here and this will be our solution so now that we know we have four identically distributed random variables for IADs all we have to do is do four times our variance and so all we have to do is find our standard deviation well we'll call it SD that was really bad notation on my part so we'll do this and so all we have to do is take the square root of our variance and we're gonna get 2 times 2500 and we get 5000 so I realize this is probably not going to make complete and perfect sense the first time that you do it but if you can figure out how it works and why it works this becomes a very quick and easy way to approach this problem the biggest part of your time is spent doing this and this is no big deal so if you can remember a few basic facts about exponential distributions for this problem specifically you would have no trouble just reasoning your way through it so that's how we do it more efficiently guys that's how we derive a moment generating function and we also got into independent identically distributed random variables there for a little bit so hopefully that will help you guys with a few concepts and have a nice day